Governor McCrory continues to draw national attention over House Bill 2. And gains in North Carolinians' personal income may be short-lived as businesses continue to boycott the state. I'm Brianna Goins. And I'm Terrence Jeffries. You're watching Carolina News Today. Nationwide, the state discrimination laws just keep on coming. Mississippi's governor recently signed into law a controversial new measure. It's a freedom of conscience law similar to House Bill 2 that was recently signed in North Carolina. Critics say these measures discriminate against lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Backers say they protect religious freedom. But in the midst of all that, business leaders say it's bad for the bottom line. Despite opposition, Mississippi's governor signed House Bill 1523 into law Tuesday. Governor Phil Bryant denies that the measure discriminates against LGBT people. It doesn't create a discriminatory act or power on anyone's part. It simply protects someone's religious views against the state's interference. Under the new law, religious organizations can fire or refuse employment to LGBT people or refuse to sell or rent property to them, and they can be denied medical service. Employers and schools can also make rules about bathroom access and establish gender-specific standards of dress. Major employers like Toyota, AT&T, and IBM have denounced the measure. This is North Carolina copes with fallout from its so-called religious freedom bill. PayPal has canceled plans to open a global operations center in Charlotte. Other businesses are also threatening to leave the state. Governor Pat McCrory insists the issue is privacy, not discrimination. The only reason we had that interaction uh, with the state legislature was to ensure that that uh, expectation of privacy would remain in our high schools, in our universities, in our community colleges. Similar legislation in Georgia was vetoed by the governor last week after threats from sports franchises, major corporations, and movie studios to withdraw from the state. As that report noted, PayPal has canceled its planned expansion to North Carolina because of the recently passed non-discrimination law. They're just the most recent big company to say HB2 doesn't speak to their corporate values and principles. The 400 jobs and $3.6 million investment PayPal planned on bringing to Charlotte with a new operations center will no longer happen. The company is now pulling out because North Carolina lawmakers passed House Bill 2. It's a non-discrimination law that leaves out protections for the LGBT community and requires transgender people to use public bathrooms assigned to their biological sex rather than the sex they identify with. In a statement emailed to Channel 9, PayPal's president and CEO said in part, the new law perpetuates discrimination and it violates the values and principles that are at the core of PayPal's mission and culture. As a result, PayPal will not move forward with our planned expansion into Charlotte. Today, Charlotte Mayor Jennifer Roberts called PayPal's announcement deeply concerning. This has real impact on Charlotte families and North Carolina families. And I am just urging our legislature to find some kind of legislative remedy as soon as possible. State Senator Jeff Jackson, who represents Mecklenburg County, wants his peers at the State House to repeal the law. The loss of PayPal was as painful as it was predictable. Tech companies have no interest in appearing to side with discrimination. Today, Governor Pat McCrory said he's open to improvements in the law. I'm going to respect people who disagree with our basic common sense rules. But he wouldn't answer whether he thinks the law has impacted the economy. In a move that may be more popular, McCrory this week announced a pay raise proposal for public school teachers. Teacher salaries would increase on average to at least $50,000. That's a 5% raise. The budget McCrory will send to state lawmakers will seek bonuses for veteran teachers. This week he also unveiled a college scholarship program that should help recruit new teachers. We are now going to invest $2 million additional dollars to establish a scholarship to attract new highly qualified math and science teachers and therefore we're going to have enough for 300 scholarship recipients at $6,500 per, per scholarship for these people to attract them into the teaching profession in math and science. 
The public school dropout rate in North Carolina is beginning to increase overall, but in Robinson County, much improvement has been made. Based on data from last school year, the number of Robinson County dropouts declined by about 22%. This is a rate of 2.22% of students. Still, American Indian males are the most at risk for quitting school. Statewide, statewide the rate has gone from 2.28% to 2.39%. This is the largest dropout rate seen in public schools since the 2006 school year. Most dropouts occur in the 10th grade. North Carolinians' personal income has grown in the last year, statistically outpacing the nation overall. According to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, personal income in North Carolina grew by 4.8% last year. The nation's overall growth was 4.4%. North Carolina is now the ninth strongest for growth among the 50 states in the District of Columbia. The state's gross domestic product was up 2.8%, but the loss of jobs and the fallout from House Bill 2 may pose a threat to next year's final figures. North Carolina has been inappropriately blamed for contributing to air quality problems in the northeastern part of the U.S. That's the position of the state's environmental agency, which has filed a complaint against federal officials. Northeastern states filed a petition in December of 2013 to try to force some other states to control their emissions. The EPA has yet to take action on the petition, and a lawyer from North Carolina's Department of Environment and Natural Resources says that's a violation of the Clean Air Act. The agency is suing the EPA and says the northern states failed to demonstrate the North Carolina's power plants had any impact in the Northeast. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month in North Carolina. The Highway Safety Program has launched a campaign with the slogan, One Text or Call Could Wreck It All. While aimed at phone use in particular, the campaign is concerned with all distracted driving in general, from channel surfing to eating to checking yourself out in the mirrors. North Carolina had a reported 159 fatalities in the last year caused by distracted drivers. That's about a 10% increase from the year before. The North Carolina DOT will use social media throughout the month to get the word out about the dangers of distracted driving. All 50 states have joined the Federal Trade Commission in announcing a permanent injunction against two phony cancer charities. The order will effectively shut down Cancer Fund of America and Cancer Support Services Incorporated. Their leader, James Reynolds Sr., is banned from fundraising and nonprofit work. The sham charities claim to help cancer patients and use misleading phone calls, but spent the vast majority of money on themselves and friends or professional fundraisers. The organizations must now pay more than $75 million to be donated to real cancer charities. North Carolinians were defrauded to the tune of about $1 million. The music scene on campus continues to offer a series of free events for students to take advantage of. CNT producer Crystal Dean tells us what's on the schedule. Looking to do something but don't think there's anything cool on campus? Get ready for this week at UNCP. The Department of Music has a series of free concerts this week. That's right, I said free. This week is chock-a-block full of events, so you may want to cancel all appointments. On Thursday, April 7th, the Student Chamber Ensembles takes the stage as part of the Department of Music's Senior Recital Series. The show starts at 6 o'clock in Moore Hall. Also on Thursday, and also in Moore Hall, but at 7.30, is the Brass Spectacular. Judging by that name, this show will be a big time, wake the roommates, invite the neighbors type of show. Heck, why not make a night of it and see both recitals? On Friday, April 8th, GPAC hosts the installation of Chancellor Robin Cummings. This is a big deal in the life of the university and will be worth checking out. Be a part of UNCP history. It starts at 3 o'clock and is free. Some people say weekends on campus are a little dull, but that couldn't be further from the truth. On Saturday, April 9th, it's an all-day solo and ensemble festival in Moore Hall. It starts at 8 in the morning and wraps up at 5 in the afternoon. But wait, that's not all, because on Sunday, April 10th, the biggest and brassiest joint recital happening as the UNCP Tuba Euphonium Ensemble joins forces with the Charlotte Tuba Euphonium Ensemble. They hit the stage in Moore Hall at 4 o'clock. I suggest you arrive a few minutes early to get a good seat. On Monday, April 11th, Moore Hall welcomes Transient Canvas for a guest artist recital. This unique duo combines bass clarinet with marimba. If you've ever walked across campus and heard the magically tones from what looks like a wooden xylophone, then now you know how cool the marimba is, so you'll want to check out this show. Finally, on April 13th through the 16th, the UNCP Musical Theater is presenting Spring Awakening. The curtain opens at 8 o'clock Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Saturday, there's a 2 o'clock matinee. You'll want to head over to the GPAC box office and get your tickets now, as previous shows have sold out fast. 
And that's what's going on this week at UNCP. If you're looking for more events, go to calendar.uncp.edu and check out all the activities happening on campus. Until next time, I'm Crystal Dean for this week at UNCP. Keep smiling, keep shining. The Braves football team looks good heading into their spring scrimmage. And the golf team brings home a top three finish. Those stories and more in sports when we come back. With the spring scrimmage football game on the horizon, the Braves have been hitting the weights, practicing on the field, and watching a lot of film in recent weeks. Head coach Shane Richardson says they're looking good, and he's confident in this recent recruiting class. Richardson says his defensive core will be a strong factor heading into the season. Linebacker-wise, we have about five guys there that'll come in and really create a lot of good depth there. And I think a couple of our best defensive players are at the linebacker position in this class, and uh, they'll have a chance to play early. Coach Richardson has a bright star returning in wide receiver B.J. Bunn, who was named Division II All-American this semester. I talked to the Burlington native about this postseason recognition. What happens when you score a touchdown? Touchdown! After touchdown. After touchdown. Last fall, junior wide receiver B.J. Bunn accounted for 11 of the Braves' 31 total offensive touchdowns scored, as well as getting over 1,200 all-purpose yards, 956 of those being in the air. Now, with some hefty statistics like this, some postseason honors are definitely in order, and honors are what the receiver got. He was named to the first team All-Super Region 2 team, as well as being named to the Don Hanson Division 2 All-American team. I was able to catch up with the electrifying B.J. Bunn to ask him what receiving all of these accolades truly meant to him. Being selected first team all region and then to the All-American team is such a great honor. Couldn't have done it without my teammates, coaches, and family. Um, I'd like to uh, give thanks to the athletic trainer and the strength and conditioning coach, really the whole staff dealing with the UNCP football. Um, this summer, we uh, had 60-plus guys, and I was one included. Um, all of the receiving core was here. We all worked together. We all worked on our routes. We all perfected our craft. Um, leading up to the fall camp, all the guys felt good about, you know, where we were. Off a great summer workout, Coach Hannett getting us ready for the season coming up. Fall camp was uh, great. Our offense was shaping, molding from last season. We fixed some stuff that we needed to work on. Guys were watching film more. We were uh, doing individual workouts more. We perfected our craft. Um, coming into the season, first game, we just took every game at a time. Um, everyone plays for the Good boy! Oh. For Carolina News Today, I'm Dolphus Pearson III. On to the Diamond, where Braves baseball scored their fair share of runs against 8th-ranked USC Aiken over the weekend. Having racked up double-digit scores in seven out of the last ten games, the squad fell short in the three-game series. Mistakes were at a minimum, however, for the Braves, recording a lone ever. But the Pacers' bat stayed strong after four players combined for six big flaws in the opener. The Braves weren't able to muscle lot a win against the Pacers and were swept at home for the first time this season. Next on tap for the Braves, a three-game road series against Francis Marion. And congratulations to alumnus Jordan Egerton, who was recently promoted this week to the Carolina Mudcats, an affiliate of the Atlanta Braves. Braves softball have won four out of their last five home games coming into their doubleheader against Wingate this week. After giving up two Wingate runs in three and a half innings, Whitney Jackson smokes a line to left for a leadoff single. 
She would then go on to swipe second after a mishandle behind the plate. A few pitches later, Savannah Melvin hits a skyscraper to left field that would leave the yard to tie the game at two apiece. The Braves will go on to sweep the Bulldogs, bringing their win streak to four games. They now have to head into a matchup at home against Flagger. 28th ranked Braves golf took home a third place finish in the West Georgia Wolf Invitational this week after a month long break from action. The team was the highest finisher among Peach Belt contenders, topping Young Harris and Columbus, who finished fourth and sixth respectively. Four Braves sliced their way into the top 15 individually, including Ashley Thompson and Laura Bird, who rounded out the top 10. The Braves await the Peach Belt Conference Tournament on April 15th in St. Augustine's, Florida, where they finished fifth last season. That's it for CNT Sports. Back to the studio. Office, let's give a shout out to birthday girl CNT producer Crystal Dean. Happy birthday, Crystal. Thanks for all you do. And that's it for this edition of Carolina News Today. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to check us out on the web at carolinanewstoday.com. Did you know that Americans use